Welcome everybody to our latest video conversation, virtual or hybrid, that is the question. My name is Ken Khan. I am the Director of Partnerships and Collaboration here at i Technologies, and I'm here with... I'm Roxanne Glaser. I'm Director of Marketing and Learning here at i Technologies. And today we are going to be looking at the differences between virtual and hybrid and how do you choose between those? So the first part, we're going to start with some definitions because Ken... I talked to lots of people about this and some people are still a little bit like, is it virtual? Is it hybrid? What, what is it? Do you want to start us out with how would you define a virtual event? Basically, I would define a virtual event is attending anything that doesn't have a physical location that everybody goes to, right? Um, I would say typically in most virtual events, People are attending from their computer or uh, sometimes from their tablet, sometimes even from a smartphone. Usually it's one person there attending the event. Um, sometimes you'll have small groups of people in a virtual event, kind of attend. Maybe it's an office, you know, they're in a small uh, conference room in an office attending the event. But there's not just one physical location um, to go to. Would you add anything to that or how, how would you describe it to somebody? How would you describe a virtual event to somebody? Well, as you were describing that, the other word that popped up was uh, distributed, you know, so it doesn't have a location, but it's also distributed, you know, easily. And so I think that was an older term we used to use for a virtual. It would be a distributed event. But yeah, the virtual not having a particular location. How would you define hybrid event? How's that different from just a virtual event? This is the hot one right now, right? So we've got some people want to be in person. Some people want to do virtual. And I say want. Sometimes it's um, out of necessity. The virtual becomes uh, valuable. But the hybrid is there is part of your group at a physical location. So gathered together, it could be a small group, a larger group but it has a virtual component. So that's going to be the hybrid. So if you've got some people who are on site together and others that are connecting in, just as you mentioned before, through computers, tablets, phones, um, from various locations, because sometimes if you are en route somewhere, you'll want to dial in and you're kind of, maybe you're traveling, maybe you're in a car, you want to connect in. Uh, so yeah, so that's what I would do with the hybrid. Part of the people are together in a physical location. Others are distributed throughout and connect in virtually. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. There's there's in a typical hybrid event, there's one main physical location, and then people are connecting in virtually to that location that can't travel to it or aren't in that town. Sometimes with a hybrid event, there'll be hubs too. Like there'll be maybe three physical locations where there's large groups of people and then those locations are connecting together and then people even outside of those locations that that would be a, a, a large scale hybrid event but most hybrid events you got one main physical location and then people are connecting in virtually that can't travel to that location and, and I would agree Roxanne like that's the popular one right now because some people are like I don't want I didn't like the whole virtual thing when it was forced upon us. Um, I want to get together with people. I want to be in the same space with people. And then there's people that are like, I love that. And I never want to get into a spot with people again, ever. I want to always connect from my computer in an undisclosed location that nobody knows where I'm connecting in from. Or they don't know who those people would be, but they are out there. I promise you they're out there. I feel like that was a, li a little bit of self-disclosure in that answer. Mm -hmm. Now, the other part with that, there are people who maybe they do enjoy being around other people, but the circumstances might dictate that for an event that they would love to be in person, that they can't. And so that's where I think one of the strengths or one, uh, oh, I don't want to jump into the other one, but to be able to connect in via a virtual offering into that hybrid event versus missing out 
on all of the content, uh, missing out completely on the event, I think is something that is um, attractive to some people when you're like, I just can't get there, but I still want to be involved or to learn and to have that information. But yeah, now, there's, people, there's another yeah. aspect to this as well. Um, when we're talking about a virtual part of the event, sometimes it can be live or it can be pre-recorded. Like sometimes people are going to pre-record that event and then broadcast it live. Um, sometimes it's just, it's 100% live. It's it's happening in, in real time. Yeah, that's, um, I think as people, as ever, ever since the pandemic, you know, when we, we threw everyone into the, uh, the virtual pool, so to speak, um, I think people have gotten more sophisticated in understanding different types of technologies, different modalities. And this one, I think, is a key distinction because you do have that um, live aspect, which could be a live stream, which is just one to many, and the many are coming back with uh, text comments, things like that, versus a two-way interactive live, which is going to be different from your live stream, or the pre-recording and putting it up. And this is where, as we go through our conversation today, we're going to dive into some of the nuance of each of these, some of the uh, advantages, some of the challenges, just other things that we have noticed uh, in very specific contexts, just because we've been doing this for so long and we've uh, worked within these technologies. Uh, and so that's where we're going to be headed with the conversation today. All right, so let's talk about some advantages um, to adding virtual or hybrid to events. Um, so what what would be your what would be one of your top advantages to having a virtual uh, component or hybrid event? Now, just to clarify, so you're saying for a virtual event or a hybrid or having the virtual as part of the hybrid, or do you want me to do both of those? What do you think? Um, I'm not sure what your question, I don't know, I'm not sure what kind of question you're asking. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm asking you, um, okay, let's I'm see. asking you a question. Why don't you answer my question that I'm asking you instead of you answering my question with a question that right. I don't even understand. <laughs> like, I feel like you need to draw me a schematic for this question that you're asking me. I would totally. I'm do. asking you, you know you know, we talk about advantages. So there's advantages to having a virtual component to an event or having a hybrid event. So I'm talking, I'm asking you, you know, what's one of your top advantages to having a virtual component to an event? I am going to go with the answer I have used since I started in video communication years and years ago. And mine is 100%. The, one of the advantages is accessibility because I grew up in a very small town, like 300 people, like very small town. And we did not have all of the resources, like educational resources that people who came from larger schools had. And so from a very young age, I was aware of like things that we didn't have. And so as we grew into learning more about video communications and things that you could do, this is a wonderful technology to increase access. And when we say increase access to, um, to experts, increase access for education, increase access for, like you said, uh, we mentioned before, let's say you're having, uh, you have a family member that's sick and you need to be close to take care of them, but there's an event going on and there's something that's you need to be present for an hour. And if it, there's a virtual component, you can do that. And so for me, that is always the number one, increasing access. Yeah, and I, and I like within that too, um, like your example of like, I might not be available for the whole event, um, but I can attend for part of the event, right? And um, in a lot of the virtual events we do, there's usually a... Um, a, a a recording of at least part of the sessions. And so it's like, if I can't see everything live, I can at least attend uh, virtually for some of it. I'm going to go with my favorite one uh, advantage 
is the lower cost, um, lower risk of a virtual event. Um, and I know that uh, people might want to argue with me on this a little bit, because I guess if you've never done a virtual event, you might be like, oh, there's a lot of risk involved, but I've done both. OK, so I've planned in person, 100 percent in person conferences and events, multi-day. Um, and then I've also planned multi-day uh, virtual. Oh, uh, then I've, I've also planned multiple day virtual conferences. Um, so when I did the in-person conference, I mean, you had to sign a, you had to find a hotel, you had to sign a contract, you had to guarantee a certain amount of rooms. There was a lot of money on the line. I mean, to me, it was, there was a lot of risk involved, even though, um, the organization that I was a part of at the time, you know, it's like, you kind of knew we should be able to, but again, it was all should, we should be able to get this many people there. We should be able to do this. And, you know, um, there's not a lot of scalability there either. Cause it's like, you know, you're, you're always kind of looking at a sweet spot, right? It's like, we need to have at least this many people, but we can't have more than this many people. Mm -hmm. um, with a virtual event, I mean, you don't have to be tied up into all of that contracts that you know you don't have to lock down a location you don't have to provide all this food there's not all this upfront money that you're needed to put on the line and hope that you get enough money mm. in to pay for things um if the event blows up for some reason like everybody's like man i want to attend this event it's so much easier to scale it right it's like oh we have five thousand more people than we thought would come to our event no big deal we just you know, scale everything to be able to do that. You can't do that with a physical location. Like we can only handle so many people in this particular location at a time. So to me, the the lower risk and cost of a virtual event is a huge advantage. Well, that's, I can completely see that because, and, you know, as we all experienced a few years ago, I can't believe it's been three now, you know, people caught with that contract and you're like, no, we're, you're not going to be able to come. Yeah. That's a great point about the scalability of it. Now, one thing is you were talking, I was thinking about the difference of that. You made me start uh, thinking about being in those large ballrooms, you know, for a like onsite, if we were talking a conference situation um, and you have the, the screen that's going to be on the stage, especially if it's a larger one. So, um, you know, there are people who, you know, sometimes you long for that being in person is going to be better. I mean, I talk to people, they're like, no, in person is 100% better all the time. Well, I don't agree with like 100%, 100% kind of thinking because, you know, there's always context and nuance. And for me, I started thinking about this, um, of the, just the visuals to be able to see the speaker, to be able to see what's going on. Sometimes if you are in a large ballroom, not every seat's great. Sometimes the acoustics are really bad. So if you're hard of hearing or you have some other type of accommodation that needs to be made, there's a lot more that's going to go into it. And now what we're seeing with the virtual tools, you know, now that we've got closed captioning built in, some of them are building in translation even, uh, you basically, I think we were chatting the other day and I love that phrase. You said, we're like, every seat's a front seat, you know, front row where you can see the content perfectly. You can see the speaker. Um, so I think that is one that, um, can be, uh, I'd count that as an advantage as well, depending on what the content is and that you could be able to see it. And bonus for that recording. I loved that mention of that because that's, uh, sometimes I like to hear things twice. Um, now, uh, I would say another advantage is, um, with a hybrid. Okay. So like you just mentioned, some people are going to be like, I really don't want to connect virtually. I, I find a lot more value getting away from my family for a few days and just being away. Um, where some people are like, I don't like being away from my family for a few days. I just want to pop into the conference, interact, network, and then have time to be with my family later. So to me, that's the advantage of the hybrid, right? That's the best of the, both worlds, right? You can accommodate the people that 
want to travel to a location, maybe experience that location, um, do the whole after hours type of stuff that they like to do to network. And then you can also accommodate the people that are like, I can only pop in from like, you know, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. That's my window uh, during the day that I can do this. Otherwise, I, you know, I, I can't participate. Um, so to me, that's that's the advantage of that. You can accommodate both types of people. You know, to your point about, I think that relates to that inclusivity accessibility thing, right? Like you're meeting people where they're at. You're honoring um, people's wishes and not being like, okay, well, it's going to be virtual. I don't care if you like to be on site or not, or it's like too bad. If you can't be here, you can't participate. You know, you can accommodate both, both groups. Yeah. And, you know, we've been talking about the, um, you know, the advantages that uh, the challenges, I think we should have an honest conversation about that because it's not all, you know, simple and easy to do. Yes, challenges. Um, so let's talk about the challenge. We talked about the advantages. So um, obviously not everything is, uh, what's the phrase people use, rainbows and unicorns. Not everything is great. Not everything. Uh, I liked your comment about like nothing, anybody that's like, it has to always be in person or it has to always be virtual. It's like, I mean, come on. I mean, sometimes mm -hmm. It's, you know, you got to look at what are the goals, what are the objectives, what are the reason, you know, it's the blended process that we talk about with people. It's like, what's the best way for us to do this with what we have to offer, right? So there's challenges with that too. So challenges, give us, give us one of your, what are one of you, what's one of your top challenges? I don't know why I'm feeling like this is family feud right here because a hundred percent even though I said I don't believe that, I know I've got the number one answer here. Number one answer, challenges, <laughs> dependence on the network, because that <laughs> I have been just very fortunate in the course of my career as, you know, if you think of instructional technologist or the training aspect of it, I have always been uh, on a team with the technical group. So I learned early on you got to have enough bandwidth. You got to have a stable network. If you don't have that, it is just going to be painful and horrid for all of it. I mean, without that, you you there's nothing you can do, right? But the that being a challenge, the good news is like uh, technology is way improved since back in the day where we would have to go on site and have to pay exorbitant amounts for a, you know, dedicated connection that this is the only thing that would be on it would be the video, not even all of the conference stuff, the video would be on this one separate uh, portion of the network, you know, and now there are other, there are things that they can do, but make sure if you're going to do any type of hybrid that you have someone knowledgeable talking to the locations, tech people. And a lot of times you're, it gets kind of convoluted, right? Cause you're talking to a third party contractor that works with the site, but you have got to have good network. That's going to be my number one, Ken. You yeah. Uh, yeah. No, no. I mean, the network's a big one. And you know, even in a virtual event, right. Um, it's like, you got people connecting in from their homes and, you know, their home offices and all that kind of thing. Now, I will say to your point, things are a lot better now than they've ever been because we've all been through the pandemic and everybody was forced to go home and forced to connect from home. Um, people are a lot more aware of their capabilities than they were before. And so they'll know like, yeah, I'm not going to be able to connect. Um, you know, I'm visiting my, uh, this is a one that comes up for me. It's like, sometimes if I'm out of town, right. It's like, oh, I'm visiting family or it's like, what's their, yeah, my mom's bandwidth is not the greatest. So I'm not gonna be able to plan anything big there. I'll be able to do think, but like to be on video I might not be able to do that. So people are more cognizant of that now. And, and I feel like the technologies too have become more accommodating to different mm -hmm. levels of bandwidth where they just automatically know, okay, we this person says they want HD, but they ain't getting it because they don't have the bandwidth to be able to get it. This is stuff that'll have, you don't even have to select it, right? It's just the, 
the technology will know now, okay, yeah, this dude's connected in off of a cell phone, off of like 5G. We're just going to give him this quality. And, you know, it's still good enough quality where they can see and hear everything. It's probably just not the video isn't as sharp and crisp as it might be on a, on a bigger connection. But, yeah. Um, and, you know, like you, you mentioned this too, Roxanne. I mean, we've been doing this for a long time, even in the hard times. And, you know, I could probably count on one hand the times where just Murphy showed up and just, yeah, the power just went out right in the middle of the presentation. That, that's happened to us where, yeah, just right in the middle of a live presentation, the power just decided it needed to just turn off for a little bit. Um, and, you know, there's nothing you can really do in that moment except roll with it. And, you know, we always have like backup, you know, that's why we like to do things together too, where it's like, okay, the likelihood of both of us going down at the same time, it's apocalypse, baby. We're all, we're all hurting. <laughs> Everybody's going down. So we're, we're all in the same boat, but like, mostly it's like one personal drop. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, well, let me just kind of roll with this here and let's, let's keep the train rolling and see what happens. Um, but yeah, I mean, depends on the network. You can usually depend on it, I would say. And I think the, um, as we were, you know, as you were saying that, I was thinking of the, uh, like, hotel or uh, venue networks. I think they're also so much better now. And, you know, they know a lot of people are, people are just using a lot more bandwidth. So to make that available, but just be sure to have that conversation. Yeah. Now, the, I think another big challenge, and this can be in person too, is, quality engagement interaction, you know, quality engagement, quality interaction. So there's lots, in, and I think this is why some people don't like virtual events is because they've been to very bad virtual events, <laughs> right? Where they're just throwing something up there and you're like, this stinks. You know, the video people were looking up their nose or the lighting's bad or their audio's bad or somebody's microphone keeps opening up and the person that's leading it is like oh everything seems to be fine it's like no dude it's you it's you dude like <laughs> fix that um, so yeah it, you know it takes some intention but it's not impossible to just be like we like to do little huddle ups is what we like to do like 30 minutes before a start time even when we're all seasoned just to be like hey is everything working the way that we want great. Okay. Well, we, now we got 25 minutes to just chill out, go get our water and do everything. Or like, oh, wait, no, something's weird about your video. Um, turn your camera off, turn it back on, you know? Um, so I think that's a bigger challenge that can sometimes leave a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths is the quality of the engagement or interaction. That one is, you were describing that, um, you know, I had several instances as a, uh, you know, participant in different events. And I think you're, the word you, when you used intention, I think that is very important because a lot of times when someone is doing, uh, especially I see this in hybrid so much that all of the attention goes to the people that are in the physical room and a co complete ignoring of anyone who's virtual. And in that, you know, if we, anytime we're working with a client or an organization about how to plan this, the phrase that I like to explain to them, like, that's the worst TV possible. Like, that's a terrible show. Nobody's going to watch that. You know, if you don't have, like, like you, you just ran through the whole thing of it, Ken, of like, you know, the audio, the interaction, when you think of that, of how are the people who are watching you, if they have a question, if they need help, if they want to share, how are they going to do that? And if the answer is like, we don't know, we don't care, then just do a recording, throw it up later, I guess. I don't know. That to me is, it is just, it's not quality. That is, it's not a good experience. And I think the way you said it, that's what gives it a bad name. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's and that's the challenge. And you mentioned hybrid, and I think with hybrid, that can be the challenge. Like we talked about, you know, best of both worlds and the advantage. Well, it can also be challenging to do that at a quality level, right? Because if you're going to have hybrid at your physical location, 
You need to have a camera. You need to have a good microphone. It needs to be set up a certain way where, you know, they can see the speaker. You know, if you have, if, if the audience is highly interactive, well, they need to be able to see the audience too, right? So you might need multiple cameras if it's, if, if it's that type of a, of a workshop or that type of a presentation. Um, Roxanne mentioned the facilitation part of it, right? It's, very easy when you're presenting in front of hundreds of people to forget that there might be thousands of people or hundreds of other people virtually. And so, you know, you got to be able to facilitate that. And so, you know, lots of times in a hybrid situation, we get called in to help, you know, be that person that sets the equipment up, tests everything, make sure everything works. We're working behind the scenes to help facilitate that virtual group and bring them into the uh, physical location. Like, you know, maybe we have a representative in the physical location that's being their voice. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause it can, it's, it, you know, when you were saying like, you know, so you ask somebody, you know, how are you going to do that? And they're just like, oh yeah, well, you know, we'll figure it out. It's like, no, dude, these aren't the thing. You can't just figure this out on the fly. You know, you can't be in the middle and just be like, oh, yeah, how are we going to like talk to all those people that are watching us on the live stream? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got to have that figured out before you walk in there. And I think since so many people have watched a live stream and not put one together or designed that type of event because they've watched one and they know their phone, they can do FaceTime on their phone or some type of video communication on their phone then when they're in that situation, if they were like, oh, how would we make this virtual? We have all these people here and we want to just put up a live stream. You're like, oh, does someone have a, uh, a phone that we can just log in and stream it? And you're like, okay, yes. But then there are some other things that you, you still need to think about that network. You still need to think about, you know, a little bit about the quality of it. And yeah. And it needs to be tested. It's not something you just start five minutes before your event. If it is a perfect, you know, if you're like, okay, I'm just, you know, live streaming the T-ball game for, you know, the grandparents is one level. But if this is like, you know, high level investor meeting, if it's, you know, training and team building for your group, that's going to need a little more intention and uh, planning and design to that event. Well, let's move into another topic. Um, just, you know, some other interesting thoughts that, you know, may be advantages or challenges depending on how they're framed. So interesting thoughts. What are some other interesting thoughts? Does anything come to mind um, that we haven't hit on yet or maybe something to go into a little deeper? It's, you know, as we were... As I've been listening to things you've added into the conversation, so many things keep popping into my mind. And so I'll kind of start with what I touched on a little bit in those challenges. It really is the preparation, the intention, intentionality. And we've seen a tremendous shift in the last um, three years, almost four since the advent of the pandemic. Um so in the before times, as we worked with people on, you know, preparation, there was much more emphasis on explaining kind of like the technology. This is how it would work. This is what we would do. Oh, this is, you know, so we were having to explain that a great deal. <clears throat> and then since the pandemic, when everyone's had this, you know, huge dose of everybody knows what Zoom is, everybody, you know, has a familiarity with it. Then our preparation and the intentionality of the conversation has shifted to where we're like, okay, what is the quality you want? You know, kind of what are your, what are you really wanting to do with this? And also getting that difference from when everybody was at home on their individual devices versus when you do have, once you get to two people, an individual device, it changes things. A lot of people don't know that the built, if you're using a built-in microphone, some of them are designed, they have a very small field of vision or field of audio, 
that's not field of vision, but you have to be sitting directly in front of the microphone for it to hear. And so if you put two people and they start talking, you're like, the audio sounds muffled. You're like, it's not designed for that. So that shift of like, how do we get that ease of use of just one person familiar with all of their technology to, I need two or three people in one location huddled together to communicate effectively. Oh, how do we do the hybrid? And like I said, I've been in more than one instance where, you know, as they, they're like, oh yeah, we'll just, the people who want to come back here and the other people can just zoom like we've been doing. And I'll just, um, I'll just put my, I'll put the little iPad here and we'll just stream it out with, in you know, and with good intentions, but with not the um, background that we have in how to design those experiences as well. And it is a poorly designed hybrid event can be um, excruciating for the remote sites, like the microphones and all of that. And the thing that you might not notice, if you're in the room, you're not going to notice that. So you can have two completely different experiences on a hybrid where it's wonderful in person and the remote sites, like, oh my gosh, the audio, the, you know, papers rustling by the mic is, it can be terrible. So that's, um, advantage challenge no interesting thoughts are where we are so that's just something that i've noticed right yeah and you know um i had an event that i wanted to attend virtually they had done it previously uh, virtually and they said you know what we're not offering it virtually this time because we just feel like our quality in this room that we're going to be doing from won't be good and you know, I was disappointed because I wasn't able to go there in person. I wasn't able to go to the physical location of the event. Uh, but I respected it at the same time versus them just pushing ahead, being like, hopefully this works OK. Mm -hmm. um, because like you said, it's like there's nothing more frustrating than like the audio just keeps dropping out. And it, it's almost like what's worse, like it just being muffled the whole time or just to periodically drop out. I, I don't know. I've been in both. And I'd almost want to say like the dropping out periodically where you're like, oh, it just the connection just dropped again. Or I can't really see like, like the let, you know, where they maybe they aren't able to just share the content through a computer or through a software. And like, they're just trying to focus it on a screen and the lighting's all jacked. And you're like, I can't really read that. Um, so it's like, yeah, you really want to think, you know, should we, are we able to, you know, there's a difference between good enough and like, it's not even good enough, dude, don't do it. Even when you're like, we're not even charging for this. It's like, yeah, but you're just going to get yourself, you know, you're giving yourself a bad, you're giving people a bad taste in their mouth for whatever content you're trying to show them. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you really want to think that through. And I think that takes me to like, you know, you mentioned a little bit of this earlier on perspective. You know, so seeing and hearing was one of the things you brought because you were like, oh, look, like on a virtual event, it's like everybody's in the front row. Everybody see, can see everything great. Everybody can hear great. Um, you know, when you're in person, sometimes you're like, you know, I know dude says I don't need the microphone because I talk loud, but I'm old and in the back and I can't freaking hear what he's saying you know, versus like, I'm in, I'm on my computer and I'm like, yeah, I'm old and I got my speakers turned up loud and I can hear everything that's being said. So, you know, that changes perspective. You know, another one that I think is a nuance to that, um, <clears throat> you know, when you were talking about the difference now when we talk to people, you know, before we'd have to explain how everything worked, right? We couldn't really get into the meat of their presentation well now the conversation seems to be more shifted because everybody's pretty much been a, a participant you know I've, I've met very few if anybody even older people now because of the pandemic that haven't at least participated in some type of webinar or virtual event or something it might not have been very interactive but they kind of have familiarity with the whole camera microphone computer thing you don't have to talk about that but when they have to be the presenter that's where we spend a lot of time talking of like, okay, well, how do I co-present? You know, like we're usually in the same physical space together. You know, we can like 
you know, tag each other in and out, you know, literally to go next. Like, how do we pass the microphone around? Like, when we can't physically hand it to each other. So, yeah, that whole co-presenting, like reading the audience too, that's still a challenge for me um, on a webinar. You know, I, you know, that's why I always like to co-present with Roxanne or somebody because at least I got that person's body language to read off of. But like when I'm solo and I'm just like, are these jokes even landing? Like, I think they're funny, but like, is this going to come off all right? Or are they just going to be like, who is this dude? Like, what is he even talking about? So the whole co-presenting body language thing um, with, pers you know, perspective. Yeah, that um, <laughs> so many things as you were describing, it has really been very interesting after the pandemic. And as you said, um, I think I, I have in most people I encounter have also been at least an attendee, um, you know, through a Zoom session or some type of uh, interactive or live stream to where the last and this was just a kind of um, hobby type of uh, creative class that I was leading. And oh my, it was it was fantastic of like people came in and they came in with the expectation to fully be present and participate. So they came in cameras on, and this was a very wide demographic. We were, um, you know, very distributed uh, from different countries and such, but people who in the past, we would spend so much time working on making sure your camera's right, things like that. You know, they would be like, Oh, let me make sure I've got my camera. And they were just, by nature of having it's now become normal to think about okay let's make sure that I'm framed well that you can see me that I'm present and the other thing that I've been noticing and this is just kind of an interesting uh sidebar because when we first started uh teaching about video conferencing I mean you know Ken how long how much time did we spend on cameras and microphones and I think now, you know, the microphone you've already mentioned it earlier we've mentioned it several times I think the audio like that can be really painful. And so this particular group that I was with, to a T, every one of them were like making sure that their microphone etiquette on point. And so that's another thing that, you know, I've been noticing is like people are increasingly more aware of that. But that is, again, as we mentioned, and this is an interesting, very nuanced, they're very aware when they are, on the receive in, you know, in their home environment. But I think where, if you've not had the experience in the, in the hybrid of what those microphones can do in transmitting like other noises around them from the ballroom or a large uh, conference room to the other sides. Uh, but yeah, the whole microphone thing of like being aware uh, that one is uh, much more uh, common knowledge than it was before. That was like an interesting random thought that uh, just kind of like followed the little filament around. What else do you have? Other kind of. Yeah, I think the I think to kind of wrap us up on this topic um, is that whole networking community relationship piece it <laughs> is is can be different, too. Now, um, you know, I think some people might feel like. I can't do network or have relationship or community virtually. Um, and I would say you can, because I, I mean, I know from, from experience you can, uh, and, you know, and lots of times it does come down to, well, how's the event put together? You know, if, if it's just one way, if it's just a live stream and you're just chatting through a text box. Yeah. It's, it's hard. It can still happen that way too. You, you recognize names, especially if it's a repeated thing. But, um, you know, it is something that you have to be very intentional about, like we talked about uh, earlier, you have to plan, think, okay, how can we get people to talk to one another, to interact with one another? Because um, it's not like you can be like, oh, we're going to have uh, drinks and snacks from five to six, where people are like, sweet, I'm going to that. And even the introverts are like, Oh, I would like some snacks. So you go and you end up getting talking to people. So it's like you got to have to think about in a virtual environment. Well, how are you going to get people to to interact? What are you going to do to help build that community? And that's a um, that's a that's a tricky one. 
because you can't like force it of like, hi, welcome, boom, breakout rooms, you know, (laughs) you're like, what? You just like, just like, I barely got to say hi. I wasn't even like, you know, so it really is, must be intentionally incorporated into the event because that will, people will disappear on you and it's easier to disappear virtually. I don't even have to like go out the back door in the, you know, get out the door in the breakout session. I can just be like, oh, I'm yeah, out. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to do that. A lot. Yeah. You don't even have to do that. You just... It's like hundred percent. Boom. I'm out. All right. Well, and your camera just did its weird little thing. So do you see it? There we go. And yeah, so things like that, that's the other thing I'm noticing too. And this is when I first came to uh, video communication, they were like, if something's not working for you, speak up. Cause like the, that's one of the things, like sometimes in a, uh, when you're all in the same room, you kind of have that sense. Sometimes you'll have the spidey sense of like, oh, this isn't going well. Well, in the virtual, you do have to be more intentional. If you are presenting to check, to make sure, you know, everyone can see and if you're on the receive end and something sounded like you're like always check. And I think that's uh, definitely a way to uh, make sure you have the best quality you can. So our next topic, we are going to uh, transition into some of the things that uh, we do at I2I Technologies to help people with video communications. So as we wrap up our conversation today, we're going to take you through some of the ways that we help people with video communications here at I2I Technologies. This is our specialty. It is what we uh, do very well with a variety of organizations. So Ken, you want to kick it off and tell it? Yeah. Yeah. The the first thing we can do to help people is just have a conversation. So um, I would encourage anybody to reach out to us. As you can tell, um, if you watch any of our video conversations, we love talking about this stuff. Um, so, you know, if you're like, yeah, should we do virtual on this event? You know, should we do hybrid? Like what's all involved? Like, just hit us up, right? Just be like, hey, can we get like 30 minutes to just pick your guys' brains on this? We're trying to figure out if we want to do this or not. So we're always open to a conversation, obviously free of charge. We're not going to be like, well, do you have a retainer with us? Um, you know, we, we don't go down that path on that. So yeah, you know, we're always open to like a brief conversation where you're just like, hey, we're want to dip our toe. We're not sure if we want to get in the pool or not, you know, if, if this is the right time for us, because you know, sometimes it's not the right time. It's like, yeah, you know, I don't know if that makes sense for you or not, depending on what you're, you know, again, I said this earlier, like, you know, what are the goals and objectives of your event? You know, what are you trying to do? What's your big thing? What do you want to be able to do with this? What resources do you have available, you know, to you to be able to do that? You know, does it make sense, you know, for you to be able to do hybrid on some level? And, and, you know, and I think within the conversation too, it's like, you know, sometimes you don't need to go full blown either. Right. It's like, we've done some things where people have done like, okay, we're just going to do this little piece of our event hybrid and let people come in virtually for like maybe just the general sessions. Um, because we don't want to have all this equipment. We're not sure about this yet. Let's just, you know, go in gently. Um, or like, you know, maybe it's not the right time to do that too. So anyway, conversation is a great way to start. And if you want to go in deeper, you know, and you want to be like, yeah, maybe we want to bring you guys in to help us with this event. Planning is is probably the next big step, right, is where we'd actually formally become a partner with you in, in one form or fashion and help you put a plan together for your event. Um, you know, from it could be a, a multi-day event. It could be a one, you know, a, maybe it's just a live webinar that you're doing, Um, But we could sit down with you and actually put an action plan together and help you um, execute it. Yeah, yeah, um, another aspect of our services is we can help you with the marketing and the communication. And with that, we do have a kind of wide level of services from helping you design event graphics, uh, event logos, things like that. And then how do you communicate that? Because this is the um, the face of your event. I and mean, how do you communicate professionally? So we do 
it is an end to end with that from some of the activities we've done before we've done fully designed communication plan thinking from through like announcements uh, call for proposals acceptance so we've done complete communication plans even thinking through things we've helped people design forms for feedback we have, let's see, what other types of things I'm like drawing a blank. Oh, we've helped with uh, copy for websites. We have helped design and implement uh, mail uh, newsletter communications through the, uh, different types of platforms. So we can help you with working within your systems, or if you need additional third-party systems, we can help you figure out which ones would work for that and how they work together. So, Ken, do you have an add-on? Anything I've slipped my mind? Yeah, uh, a couple other ones popped in my mind. Like, uh, we've helped people design their slide decks for their presentations, like maybe just help them with some intro slides or housekeeping slides. Like, you know, you want to tell people how to communicate or do things. Um, we've helped uh, also with that communication during the event. Like, how do we collect the... Um, comments that people are putting into the chat and put them out to the presenters in a way that they can digest it and stay focused on their presentation. So that's another communication aspect. Like, you know, and like, we do so, uh, we have a wide, like I said, now I was like, the other thing we started doing this year that uh, has been very helpful is we have also, we can also assist with preparing your speakers uh, preparing speakers, uh, in particular the keynote to do a little, uh, sometimes it needs just a little light touch on the slide deck or how you're going to introduce the conference or the event. So those kind of pre-launch slides, we worked with that. And then we've also done some, um, video design where we'll do some, uh, interviews and then polish and edit some videos that you uh, people have used in social media and also within the newsletter. So adding that video comp component for communication has really helped uh, to increase attendance, honestly. Um, so another area we can help with is that preparation of your virtual environment um, or your hybrid environment. We've kind of alluded to this as we've talked about different things um, during this session, but um, yeah, so I mean, we can put together what, what your whole virtual environment is going to look like. Maybe if you have an event app application, um, we can help design that, and set that up, maybe even uh, show how people can go to your event website and how that segues into the event itself and how they get into the sessions um, for a hybrid environment, obviously, you know, setting up equipment or recommending what equipment that you need. You know, maybe you have staff um, that are your boots on the ground and we just work work with them on setup and testing and that kind of thing um, with the, with the hybrid environment. And so then another aspect is the actual facilitation and the support of the event. So we can assist with that launch of it. We can assist with monitoring sessions. Um just the behind the scenes. So, so sometimes we are on camera and very present within the events and other times we are behind the scenes. And so we have worked with teams to help them, you know, in the planning part of like that event design of like, oh, this is how we're going to submit questions. Well, actually during the event, we are on task and present and we take that part of the work so that the team we were working with, the internal team, they were focused on being on camera and negotiating and passing that microphone back. And then what Ken and I were doing was managing and the inflow of questions and comments. So that's another example of something that we would do actually during the uh, event to support it. Yeah. And sometimes even in uh, um, larger events too, where we're more uh, involved, you know, we're that support team too, like somebody can't get into the event you know, or they're like, uh, yeah, I don't know, how, you know, I can't share my content properly. You know, we get called on and pulled in to help from that perspective as well. Um, so it just, it just depends, but um, we do that. And then uh, closing out the event 
is another aspect. And uh, we just did a we did a video series on on this because I think it's it's often an afterthought or not done very well at all. But, you know, we help people with that. Like maybe it's just how do you follow up with your uh, participants that came into the event? You know, is there any data that you can look at? Are there any reports? Um, I mentioned recordings earlier, like are there recordings that need to be polished up um, and transferred or posted somewhere, or uploaded somewhere? Um, you know, do we need to have some type of after action uh, meeting to, you know, talk with the with the group that was involved and, um, you know, what went well, what, what did we like, what were the challenges, what could we do differently next time and uh, just close out that event on a high note so you can uh, use that information going forward. There you are. So if you would like to learn more, you can visit uh, www.i2itech.com slash virtual or reach out to Ken or to me for that conversation. Because one of the things that you can tell from just listening to this, this is an area that we are highly specialized and we've worked through literally every aspect of virtual and hybrid events for a number of years. So Ken, anything else in closing? Yeah, and if, if some of this information appealed to you, uh, you'll see different videos on our YouTube channel about different things that we've done to help people, different aspects of our services. If you were curious about like, you know, tell me more about the marketing communication piece or the planning piece. We have different videos for that. We have different conversations that we've had too. So uh, you want to get to know us a little bit before reaching out. Like I know sometimes we were like, uh, I don't know if I want to, I feel like I want to have a conversation with these folks, but I'm not sure about it. You can get a feel for who we are through those videos. And like I said, uh, you know, if you, if you can get up the courage and you have something to talk about, feel free to reach out to us. We're always up for uh, a conversation. All right. Well, thank you for joining us and we will see you on the next one.